Let's talk about digital resurrection. Imagine that your best friend has died. A tech company has a product where they can use generative AI to create a digital version of your dead best friend. You send the tech company thousands of text messages that went back and forth over the years between you and your friend and a decade of emails. Some of the emails say things that were private that your friend probably would not want shared with anyone, but you do it anyway. After a couple months, you put on a virtual reality headset, you choose augmented reality mode, and you click on a link to meet your new digital best friend. You are now able to hang out with your new digital best friend in virtual reality and have the same type of conversations that you would have had with them while they were alive. This technology is available today. Now, before computers, we were accustomed to sorting through people's belongings when they died. Well, now many if not most of us have more data online than we do belongings. I have more than 62,000 photos in my iCloud and I can't even count the text messages that I have stored. We all have the potential for a digital afterlife and all of this data can be leveraged to create a, a digital version of dead you. Now, the problem is that the law has not kept pace with this technology. If you include a provision in your estate plan that you do not want to be digitally resurrected, guess what? No one can tell you that it will be enforced. If you're being digitally resurrected for commercial reasons, like an endorsement deal, there are legal protections. But if you're being digitally resurrected by your ex-boyfriend who is just creepy, no one can probably do anything about it right now. Follow me for more interesting information on law, death, and technology.